Hi everyone and welcome to the Render Media Vlog where we talk everything business and marketing. With me here today I have Agnes Kotz, Manager of Marketing and Communication for Dorsey. Thank you for joining us. I'm very happy to be here. So let's start off with Dorsey. Tell us all about your company. Yes, yeah, so we're a real estate developer. We've got a few different divisions, residential as well as commercial. We work on a variety of different projects with great partners, so in the high-rise space. And we're working on a new project right now that I can't say too much about, but it's definitely very exciting. And it's given me the opportunity to work with some of the best minds across a variety of different disciplines, from planners, uh, developers, engineers, um, it's very exciting. Sounds intriguing. I can't yes. wait to see this uh, roll out. Yes. You know, one of the trends that we're working with heavily now is just the importance of building community. There's a statistic, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but loneliness is equivalent, has the health detriments of smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Wow. So if you think about the importance of real estate development on society from that perspective in terms of you know, it's not only about selling units, it's about building communities. It's about understanding that this is where people live. It's a very personal thing to all of us. I'm sure, you know, in choosing a home, it was a big deal to you. It's not a decision that you make lightly. So for a marketing perspective, it's super interesting for me to be able to work with so many different disciplines and understand the psychology of a buyer and also the impacts of the product on society and on people. So, well, very it, interesting. It certainly sounds super interesting. Now let's talk about you and how you arrived here at Dorsey. I mean, yeah. this uh, role didn't just happen overnight. No. You've been in marketing uh, for uh, a good amount of time and you are very experienced. So tell us how you started and how did you end up where you are now? Yeah, so um, it's been over a decade now. <laughs> Um, and I started off actually in the real estate development space, a junior entry level position, but it was great to kind of get my feet wet and also understand all the different nuances that go into sales and marketing. And from there, I actually got to work within consulting as well as the agency world and also in-house um, across a variety of other industries. So I've kind of touched a little bit of all of the different facets of marketing um, in that I've worked you know, at an agency with clients from the shopper marketing, the CPG world, from a consulting perspective with real estate and development, and then also in-house again with real estate development, as well as retail and shopper marketing. So what all of these industries kind of have in common is the importance of the consumer. Um, and it's really interesting to see the differences and the nuances with how the different business models approach the problem. Obviously, in-house, your role is very different than it is at an agency, let's say. You know, hard work all around <laughs> and the importance of getting a job done. I've been very fortunate in that I've gotten to kind of get experience from all of these areas. And now you've worked both agency side, as you said, as well as in-house. What are some of the main differences you've uh, realized over the years working on both sides? So the agency world is fast paced. You get in there, you get a brief, you work your butt off, <laughs> and then you have an end product. In-house it's a little different just because you're working with a variety of different stakeholders. You're working with a variety of different departments. Um, ultimately, you're all working towards the same goal, but it's a longer term project because you're worried about you know, the core brand that you're representing. You're worried about sustaining a business. You know, you can't just blow your entire budget on one campaign no matter how cool, you know, the Christmas idea is. You can't do it. At an agency, it's different. It's, it's all about creativity. It's all about blowing the budget for the one really cool idea. It's about bringing something to your client that they would have never thought of before. So I guess the priorities in the different worlds are very different. So essentially you are more connected to the brand when you're working in-house and looking at it holistically and taking into consideration all the different aspects of that company. Exactly. So Versus when you're with an agency, you're more sort of focused on that initiative. Exactly. What so you've been hired to do. What you've been hired to do, um, or to get the one result that the company has already identified as important. But when you're at the company, you see why that one result is so important, right? And you kind of get down into the nitty gritty of, all right, we have you know to improve sales or we need more brand awareness, but why do we need that or what's the innovation that we're working on? So you don't necessarily see that side of things in the agency. Amazing. It sounds like over your career you've really been able to challenge yourself 
by switching roles, switching in-house, uh, going agency side. So it sounds like you've had a lot of experience in and keeping it very fresh as well. Yeah, and that helps kind of keep me on top of my craft. So as a marketer, it's so important to continually learn. Obviously, that's important for every occupation out there. You can't suddenly stop learning. But in marketing, especially with like the digital era, everything's changing so quickly. Right? What we knew as marketers 10 years ago isn't necessarily true anymore. So if you kind of stay within one capacity and one role and get really comfortable, you might not actually learn everything that there is out there to learn just because you need those pushes of somebody to make you uncomfortable and make you go, okay, what is it that I know? How can I do better? Um, and what tools can I use to learn these things? Now, given your vast knowledge acquired over the years working in-house and agency side, where do you see marketing going now in the future? Where do you see uh, marketing evolving on the in-house side? So I think marketing more and more um, is integrating within other departments. So businesses are seeing how the marketing insights and expertise tied with the sales data, obviously, tied with innovation, kind of gives uh, light to new possibilities. So as marketers, um, I feel like we have that natural creative thought process because we think in color, <laughs> that's how I like to say it. And that helps solve business problems from a different perspective. So it can help shed light on new partnerships. It can help shed light on new innovations or even identify new possibilities for monetizing business services or goods. So I think more and more marketers will be kind of brought into that boardroom table, if you will, and those discussions will include the marketing department or just strategic marketing thinkers. Everybody says, you know, marketing's going digital. It's always gone digital. <laughs> We're here. <laughs> but I think in terms of the amount of noise that there is out there with marketing, um, we're going to see advertising continually be more personalized, more innovative, and more purposeful. So right now, you and I both, we open up our phones, we're gonna see a million ads, right? You're gonna probably notice what, like three of them? Most likely, <laughs> if that, most likely. If that, and I think more and more because of that, marketers are just gonna get better and better at tailoring those messages um, for you. So right now we have you know all the data in the world, as we like to say it, someone's always listening, your device is always listening, but we haven't hit the perfect point of leveraging all of that to really get a story across. So that's kind of the part of marketing I'm excited for. So you see a lot of evolution with data, the mining of data, the information that's uh, accessible to marketers, yeah. and utilizing that to really be more strategic in how you're engaging those target audiences. Yes, um, it's important to also understand why you're targeting that audience in that particular point, right? So getting the data is your first battle, understanding it is the second, but then applying it to your product and what you want to say is the third. So as marketers, we've always had to be very good storytellers, right? That's kind of the basis of all marketing. But now what you need to do is alter that storytelling ability to factor in the data, to factor in the application of the data points. It's not enough for me to understand a consumer journey and to you know, target an ad during a good point of a decision-making journey. I need to also understand what it is in that point that my consumer is thinking, what are they feeling, how is the message that I'm trying to convey to them relevant to them, and then also how am I helping them. Consumers are getting really smart, right? We, we expect brands to understand us, we expect brands to tailor information to us. Um, we expect the ultimate in customer service, and as we should. <laughs> um, so as marketing is evolving, the consumer is also evolving. Um, and the two kind of need to keep up with each other. Absolutely. You can't get lazy. Right, and it sounds like that evolution has uh, made marketing far more complex. Uh, with uh, the introduction of new technologies in marketing, uh, the marketing strategy has also become far more complicated and complex. Well, yeah, I mean, if you look, you know, to the good old university days of what you learn marketing is, it's, you know, price, it's place, it's promotion. Now you have to kind of zero in on all of those elements and really understand who the consumer is, what your product is, what needs you're solving, and how you're gonna to relate to them on a much more emotional and humanistic level. You know, I love watching old ads. Um, so whether it be commercials or like, 
you know, the original Mad Men days of advertising, um, and there's a nostalgia associated with it. But nowadays, consumers don't just want to be spoken to from like a blanket perspective. Everybody understands that they're an individual, they understand that they've given their data to a brand. And they understand from a different perspective that the brand has access to all of this data. So I'm no longer okay with just being given the same brand message that, you know, everybody else is as well. It, be, it has become far more targeted, yeah. essentially. And if it's not targeted, it's being perceived by the audience as generic spam, essentially. And almost like rude. Rude, inconsiderate. <laughs> it's inconsiderate, yeah. <laughs> uh, the brand experience is horrible. And as consumers, we expect so much from brands nowadays, and as we should and audiences are very loud and vocal when a brand doesn't respond to um, whether it be the trends or things that we believe in, right? So you see the importance of sustainability in the world today, for example. And brands are being pushed more and more to create sustainability efforts, whether it be, you know, from a retailer fashion perspective in terms of the textile industry um, or you know, banning plastic straws and the companies that are getting on board with that, beverages getting rid of, you know, the rings around the cans. Um, but those are all really good initiatives and they come from consumers saying, hey, I'm no longer okay with what you're doing, so now you're gonna have to do this. Exactly. Um, and it's the marketers that will hear that first. Right. So that goes back to that idea of get your marketers in that boardroom table talking about strategy because these corporate initiatives, your consumers are telling you what they want, but are you actually listening? And then are you inviting the people that are listening in your company into these discussions? Exactly. And now let's talk more about that audience and them knowing what they want. Now, it's become far more dynamic. Um, now, do you believe that marketing has become more dynamic and more strategic and targeted because of uh, a more dynamic society, perhaps? Has our society sort of evolved more where those blanket uh, concepts, those blanket strategies don't really work anymore? You can't just advertise to a large audience with one concept. You have to really micro-target subsets of our society and different demographics. Yeah, I mean, sophistication through the roof, right? Um, everybody understands and is more self-aware. I think that people and consumers are uh, louder in terms of they have more confidence to say that I believe in this or I don't believe in this and I care if my purchases reflect my values. And society is getting a lot more diverse. You look at the differences between millennials versus Gen Z versus baby boomers. I mean, the three have no similarities. <laughs> Um, and brands need to understand that. Right, like back to your example of the Mad Men days. I think society was much more, uh, you know, um, similar in, in that sense. Like from one family to the next, the society back then was very similar from, from one family to the next. Whereas now, I think our society is far more dynamic. Yeah. Um, there's a, a lot of different types of families, different individuals, cultures. Uh, it's a lot more diverse. And as, as a result, I think that also plays into the way we're marketing as well. Yeah, um, especially here in Canada. I mean, diversity is huge, and we're so fortunate that we live in a society that not only welcomes it, but tells people to be proud of their diverse backgrounds. You know, to your early point, the Mad Men days, people also were different, but maybe in secret. Nowadays, we also have the platforms to tell everybody, this is who I am and I'm proud of it. And that's a great point. Like people had to fit a mold more so yeah. in public, so that's how they were advertised to. Exactly. Whereas, right, they might not have actually been that way. Yeah, whereas now I've got, you know, any number of social media platforms to portray my personal brand out into the world with. And I like my unique nuances and I like the fact that I'm not the same as however many hundred followers <laughs> I happen to check out every day. So it is definitely a different world in that perception. I completely agree. And it's definitely a more fascinating world, in my opinion. Yes. It keeps us on our toes. That it does. <laughs> that it does. So let's get back to talking about uh, doing in-house marketing versus hiring an agency. Yeah. So for those companies out there that are looking to uh, maybe move things in-house, what should be the thought process when these companies decide when they should hire an in-house team to execute their marketing initiatives? So you need to look at the scope of work. Um, you know, it goes down to the nitty gritty of execution details in terms of being realistic in terms of how many hours does this task take. 
for example, if you find yourself outsourcing a lot of, let's say, graphic design that are quick, easy jobs, but you're doing it all the time, you probably should have an in-house graphic designer to take care of that. That being said, you also need to be realistic about what somebody in-house can take on. You know, if you've got three or four different agencies that you're working with, um, plus a consultant and a partner, to think that two people full-time in-house can take over that entire portfolio, that's not realistic. So you have to kind of look at both sides of the coin. Um, I would say finding the balance of in-house agility and great agency partners is kind of like the key to success. So you want a solid in-house team. You want people that understand marketing, understand data, understand content, and you want them to be agile. So that's where in-house really shines in that you can make quick decisions on the fly and make edits and get results. That's very important. At the same time, an agency partner brings a different perspective. So they're not tunnel visioned by the day-to-day -day operations that often in-house teams are. That's a great point. It's like a fresh set of eyes. It's a fresh set of eyes, exactly. And also that set of eyes is doing nothing but marketing day in, day out. And likely very focused in on their specific skill set. So they are now a different level of expertise as well. Exactly. And not only the expertise, but they've also seen what failed recently. So that industry knowledge, um, that's kind of what you're paying for when you hire a partner or a consultant um, agencies because they just did a campaign for another client and they saw what didn't work. Right. They might not blatantly tell you that your idea isn't great because they just tried it and it didn't work, but that's the expertise that they're going to bring to you. Or they've done three other campaigns that are similar and they can draw on their successes from yeah. each of those other campaigns and bring that knowledge to you. Exactly, and especially when you start on the communication side of things, they've got the relationships, whether it be with the media um, or the media buying, and so there is an advantage there to working with mass um, and the relationships. But also I would say from, um, for example, a video perspective, um, anytime that you're hiring a vendor that needs specialized equipment, so to do that and build that in-house, unless you're going to build a full production studio, just doesn't make financial sense. Equipment is expensive. Uh, people that know how to use the equipment well aren't cheap. <laughs> so the amount of work that you're doing obviously matters, but unless you're pumping out videos every single day, you're probably better off with it. Well, Agnes, thank you so much for coming on. It has been very insightful. I could talk to you about this forever. Um, everyone, Agnes Cox, the Manager of Marketing Communications from Dorsey. Tune in next time.